But we had one more important sound we wanted you to hear. so true. As that what we've been hearing of late appears to be a lot of noise. Not so much in the way of strong, clear signal, though. You know? Greetings, friends, and uh, welcome in to this, the 151st edition of Fusebox, stridently entitled Audacious Oddities. And uh, we do have a few of them. Uh, Oddities. For certain. I'm your uh, screaming into a pillow by executive order host Mark Rose and joining me on this rip-roaring and two-fisted adventure over there is the uh, sultan of sonic depravity himself, Milk Keynes, everybody. Yeah, thank you kindly. You know, just when you think it couldn't get any more whack sideways in the head with a jackhammer, we get doctors claiming that medical conditions are caused by witches and demons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, and the uh, doctor to whom you refer is uh, one, actually, of our audacious oddities. And uh, we will visit with her in a moment. Oh, can't wait. <laughs> As uh, well as uh, some audacious python wrangling. Oh, going right for the porn. Yeah, oh, yeah, I get it. I mean, you know, you just take the temperature of the room and then you, you just play to that. Totally get it, man. No, no, actually, I'm serious. Real python wrangling. Like, like, like you can't believe. As well as some uh, crazy as hell attempts to reopen schools in the Midwest... A sleight of hand political ad from the office of the orange one. And uh, in the uh, Oceanside property in Idaho department, we have a few choice examples of the most audacious of high end audio enthusiast audio gear price tags you have ever heard. Yes, and but also, we have this wondrously wonderful. First little oddity. (laughs) Indeed, from our frequent contributor Jody Lorimer, a little audio morsel to get us going here. Reflecting on things that uh, fall from the sky. If you're feeling a bit like Chicken Little these days, you are far from alone. There truly are strange things falling out of the sky. And to brighten your day, which no doubt needs serious brightening, here are a few of them. In 2015, people in villages in and around Zamora, Spain, reported a rain of blood, also a very biblical apocalyptic plague. It was discovered to be a green microalgae that, when stressed, like being sucked up into a water spout, turns red, like many of us do when stressed, so we can empathize. Icky as it sounds, this algae is actually used in pharmaceuticals and fed to farm salmon to turn them pink. So, not so bad after all. In where else? Florida. A rain of iguanas occurred in the winter of 2018 when the state was hit by a bomb cyclone. The temperatures dropped so low that the cold-blooded lizards temporarily lost all bodily functions, including their ability to cling to tree branches. A rain of falling, benumbed iguanas, some reaching 5 feet and 17 pounds, sounds, well, nightmarish. So, imagine, if you will, a rain of spiders. In March of 2012, 
Gazillions of spiders rained down on Wagga Wagga, Australia. So many, it looked like it was snowing. Each tiny spider spun a few filaments out into the wind and parasailed to their new destination, where they blanketed the ground with their webs. Incidentally, there was also a rain of golf balls in, where else, Florida, that fell victim to the waterspout fish and frog carrying phenom that had sucked up and transported all the lost balls hid into the water. Never mind golf ball sized hail, this was actual golf balls. How many golf balls must there be off the coast of Florida? Enough to bury Mar a Lago to its gold plated turrets? The ick factor of a blood rain or getting landed on by a semi-frozen 17-pound iguana is easily surpassed, though, by falling poop. Called blue ice, chunks of bio-waste mixed with disinfectant have occasionally leaked out of those teensy airplane toilets, frozen to the exterior of the plane, and then fallen to the ground. They have crashed through a Unitarian church in London and a roof in New England, where it left a decided sewage and tidy bowl aroma. A ball of blue ice landed in a village in Fazalpur, Bodli, in India, where residents, believing it to be a rare meteorite, kept it in a freezer until being informed that it was, in fact, excrement. What a letdown. And a chunk crashed through a convent window in Italy, spraying glass fragments and terrifying the nuns. An unfortunate Long Island couple who lived near Kennedy Airport were enjoying a nice February evening in 2012 when they were pelted with a blackish green oily liquid. As the plane was just taking off, the excrement hadn't had time to reach a sufficiently high altitude, mix with disinfectant, and freeze decently. So, not technically blue ice, but... Yeah. But, hands down, the champion weirdest thing to rain down out of nowhere happened in 1876. The Kentucky Meat Shower. A farm wife in Olympia Springs was making soap out in her yard when she was pelted with a rain of meat chunks out of a clear sky. A Times humorist explained at the time that since Earth is surrounded by a belt of meteoric stones that are the result of exploded planets, then obviously there is a similar belt of meat fragments resulting from exploding alien livestock that occasionally falls to Earth. It was later suggested that it could be vulture vomit. If startled, the feeding birds need to get airborne quickly, and they hurl their meal. As you quarantine in your home or apartment, bored out of your skull watching episodes of Jeopardy till your eyes are out on stems, consider the alternatives. A nice rain of trout could be a welcome respite. Or it could be blue ice or vulture barf. The sky is falling. The show for everybody, but not everybody will like it. TheFuseBoxShow.com Yes, indeed, you truly don't know what the hell could fall on you from up there from time to time. Now, personally, I'm fond of the full-scale conservatory grand falling on some less-than-delightful political figures. Well, you know, that's not what I would say. I will go... <laughs> But wait, there's this bit. Did you, seriously, did you read this? This, uh... uh, uh oh, 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 yeah, 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 that one. Yeah, yeah, sad. Yeah, yeah, well, and also sort of, uh, uh darkly funny. <laughs> you see, friends, a small fraction of students in the uh, South and Midwest parts of this country have attempted, bravely, to return to classrooms... And the uh, coronavirus is uh, <laughs> already uh, disrupting their plans. In one Indiana school district, the superintendent, uh, he uh, sent out a note a few days back thanking students and parents for, quote, a great first two days of school, with exclamation points. He also said several staff members had tested positive and the school would be swiftly closed. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> well, it was brave. 
brave attempt. A little stupid on the side, though. Yeah? What the hell were they expecting? Well, maybe they're listening to this human Cheeto. It's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. Yeah. I mean, I know. It's tough. There's no getting around it. People want to get back to it. Kids want to get back to it even. Yeah, that wouldn't have been me. You know, I, I'd be praying for the plague. Or maybe giant locusts that carry people away. Anything to get out of that miserable classroom. Yeah, not fond of the uh, school process there. In a word... Fuck no. That's two words. And hey, I, I, I get it. There are a lot of kids now that actually dig it, but I, uh, certainly at that time, uh, I wasn't one of them. Yes, it's a rich experience for sure. I gotta confess, Mr. Keynes, I was not particularly fond of that experience myself. There was way too much us or them politics and, uh, and on one hand, yeah, mm-hmm, it does indeed prepare you for all the same crap in the, uh, quote, real world. But that sometimes is just akin to having rabid wolverines in your pants. Great conversation starter, though, right? Oh, hello. Hi, I have rabid wolverines in my pants. <laughs> yes. And speaking of absurd, I want to address that unbelievable situation the other day involving uh, this uh, uh, doctor. Well, you know, she was wearing a lab coat. Yeah, but so does Carl, and he didn't even make it to high school. Well, in any event, this doctor, by the name of uh, Dr. Stella Emanuel, was uh, seen in the video clips standing on the steps of... Um, well, I'm not sure exactly where, but uh, there were a bunch of seemingly medical professional types in the background there. And uh, she was talking at first about the fact that she has treated hundreds of her patients with this hydroxychloroquine anti-malaria drug for coronavirus with very positive results. Yeah, none of them got malaria. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Mr. Gaines. <laughs> Uh, it appears that uh, Dr. Emanuel graduated uh, with a medical degree from the University of Calabar in Nigeria and does indeed have a valid doctor's license according to the Texas Medical Board. Now, I got to say, we might agree to disagree on the hydroxychloroquine treatment for uh, coronavid 19 okay? Right. But... Come to find out, too, that the good doctor is uh, also a pastor and the founder of Firepower Ministries in Houston, a platform she has used to promote conspiracies about the medical profession. And uh, you can uh, find uh, these things still lurking on YouTube, by the way. She apparently has had a page up there for about 11 years, it would seem. Now, just five years ago, she alleged in uh, one of these sermons that uh, alien DNA was being used in medical treatments and that scientists were cooking up a vaccine to prevent people from being religious. Wait, she's making that sound like a bad thing. <laughs> Some of her other claims include blaming medical conditions on witches and demons, a common enough belief among some uh, evangelical Christians, though she says they have sex with people in a dream world. Quoting here now, they, uh, these demons, one would uh, suspect she's referring to here, turn into a woman, and then they sleep with the man and collect his sperm. Then they turn into the man and they now i'm i'm reading this as as it's written okay and they sleep with a man and deposit the sperm and reproduce more of themselves <laughs> she said during a sermon in 2013 oh, what, 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 they they sleep with a, a man yeah there seems to be a little confusion regarding the whole procreation process here unless she knows something we don't Impossible. I have been a little bloated lately. Well, <laughs> another issue that Dr. Emanuel targets is uh, gay marriage, saying it can result in adults marrying 
children. That, uh, that little bit there, according to the Daily Beast. Oh, hell, they've been doing that in the South forever. Nothing gay about it. Can you say child bride? Oh, Harry, rev your lips. A wondrously lurid little gem from the exploitation era, friends, made back in 1938. And uh, by the way, still available on YouTube. You can search it out. It's there. Oh, oh, oh. And uh, uh, as a, uh, before I forget this, as a uh, sidebar, Mr. Keynes, old Harry, well, he retired and then almost promptly died in... Um... Winter Park. Oh, oh, Florida. <laughs> Is correct, sir. Uh, So, uh, getting back to the good doctor, Emmanuel, here. Uh, She also offers a prayer to remove a generational curse originally received from an ancestor, but transmitted through placenta. Well, it's good to know. Never know when some demonic ancestor might fuck up your placenta. What's a mother to do? Okay, I'm, I'm just going to admit this right out. This next piece is here because it just irritated the crap out of me. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, friends, that old saying about a uh, sucker being born every minute. Well, we may have to adjust the curve to, say, maybe every 11 seconds now. So, so here's the deal. The other day, uh, I go out to the old mailbox there, and uh, in addition to still finding no OED money, act of purest optimism, I do find this exciting sample issue. Or so the cover screams at me. The, the, The magazine is called The Absolute Sound, and uh, I take it to be about, uh, High-end audio, judging by the uh, six-foot-tall, gleaming zebra wood speakers with six drivers in each column. This is a magazine that caters to the audiophile enthusiast, I would say. And it's really thick. This is the way magazines used to be before the uh, net cut the uh, average page count down to a travel brochure now. You know? Yeah, it's, it's pretty depressing these days, man. If they're even still doing print these days, most of uh, moved on to online content by now. Well, it's it's true. And, and so so I open the thing and uh, start to notice something right away. You wanted everything in it? <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Look, look as an example, I, I know, okay, there are a lot of fans of uh, vinyl records these days, and some of the pressings they're doing these days are quite exotic and quite uh, pricey, fifty, hundred dollars you know, up there. So, as an example of that uh, mindset, here on page uh, 67 <laughs> is a uh, phonograph cartridge uh, submitted for your approval. The Kaseki Purple Heart Cartridge. It has a, uh, a wooden exterior which looks to be made of a purple heart or tulip wood or, or something like that, carved out of the wood, with uh, gold connectors. I would presume, and remember now, we're talking about a cartridge, something that's probably, uh, probably two inches long, if that. And uh, in the ad, there's some chap... Sadly, I've, I've, I've not heard of him saying how outstanding this cartridge is and that he himself, Mr. Guy, here on the page in three-quarter view, smiling knowingly at you, he says this is the cartridge he uses when he wants to just listen. Listen to the wood? Or the sound of your bank account draining. Retail price of the Kaseki Purple Heart? $3,494. Are you shitting me? For a cartridge. Now look, I'll tell you, there are some pretty esoteric devices uh, used in the business of sound design and post-production and so forth. I've encountered them all my life. And in many cases, they are that way because of 
proprietary technology, or maybe they made small runs of the thing or whatever. This? This thing? Okay, wait. All right, now, now here, here's another one. And this one, <laughs> this one made me laugh out loud. Now, this is a gadget for playing the uh, aforementioned vinyl records. So, and, and this, is, this is a real phenomenon here. Not, not smoke and mirrors to get you to sell the other kidney to buy this thing. No, playing a record can, in fact, generate static. Either as you clean the thing or attempt to use one of those utterly useless uh, anti-static mats or, or just from handling it. So, this company has found a solution for you. Yeah, a CD player. (laughs) If it were only so simple and concrete, Mr. Keynes. No, this company has designed what they call is a static eliminator and demagnetizer that uh, cures this little nasty situation. And how does it do it? I kid you not. It does it by spraying charged ions onto the record's surface while the record is being played. That's right. This thing has its own Rube Goldbergian mounting stand that sits just adjacent to the turntable thingy that holds this little gizmo that resembles a small rectangular box with a spindle sticking up from it and what looks very much like a uh, tone arm needle, really. And on the end of that affair is this other little smaller rectangular box with the glowing LED. Oh, you gotta have a light on the thing, bro. There is no price listed for this contraption. But the uh, amplifiers from the same outfit that are on the same page here, they begin at $8,000. I'm talking about a phonograph. Preamp. If you have to ask how much, it's not for you. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, if it makes you feel special to dump this kind of cash around for uh, illusion wear, then more power to you. Hey, look at there. My ashtray is full in my Lamborghini. Better get a new one. So, uh, you may have seen the orange guy's attempt at uh, print advertising lately. Uh, These things have uh, appeared on Facebook and other social media outlets. Uh, It's it's touting his uh, law and order stance that he loves so much. Was that the one with the Portland protesters uh, looking like they're attacking the police? That's the one, Mr. Keynes. Now, if you're going to, if you pull it up, uh, I I urge you to uh, take a very close look at that one, if you would. Okay. Yeah, looks like, uh, hey, wait a minute, that, uh, that's not, uh... it's not Portland. It's not even 2020. That is a shot from 2014 in Ukraine. Okay, so, so those, those, uh, evil hippie scum in the picture there who look like they're assaulting the policeman? Right. These are actually pro-democracy protesters. And the policeman getting beat up is a member of the riot police who have been brought in to try to protect the authoritarian president, Viktor Yanukovych, who was attempting to turn Ukraine into a one-party state by extra-legal means. Holy carp. Yeah, it gets a lot more interesting too, Mr. Keynes. One of the extra-legal means uh, Yanukovych employed was a specialized federal internal police force, the Berkut, which answered directly to him and was used to assault his political opponents and tamper with elections. Another of the extra-legal means he used was jailing former Prime Minister Yulia V. Timoshenko after beating her in the 2010 election. That's right. He actually locked her up. Well, you know what they say about learning from history and that doomed-to-repeat-it thing. Done deal. And lastly, but certainly at the end here, is this charming anecdote from... uh, 
down there. So, they've got a little... Why is this where the porn starts? <laughs> well, if you're into ectotherms, uh, I guess it could be exciting for you. So, you see, friends, the Sunshine State is home to a lot of oddities. <laughs> Among them, hot, raging heat that's scorching in its heat-filled hotness. Bugs the size of motorhomes. Con people of every description, size, and variety, even. Oh, did I mention the heat? Yes, and but also, one of the more interesting of the uh, state's features is the proliferation of pythons. That's right. Now, Burmese pythons are not naturally found in Florida. You don't say. <laughs> But the uh, non-native pests reproduce and uh, kill other species so frequently that the state takes extraordinary measures to combat them. Now, wildlife officials removed, (laughs) get this now, 5,000 of them from the Everglades, according to a statement from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Each invasive python eliminated represents hundreds of native Florida wildlife saved, said Alligator Ron Bergeron, a member of the South Florida Water Management District's governing board. Florida is doing more than it ever has to remove pythons from the Everglades and protect this ecosystem for generations to come. How did Burmese pythons become so established in Florida, you ask? Well, I'm glad you ask. Wildlife officials say it happened as a result of escaped or released pets. It is illegal to release non-native species into the wild. So there you go, Timmy. Don't be letting your pet python loose in the garden. It'll just be a fucking mess. Seriously. And as we know, no one pays attention to the law down there anymore, so hell, might as well just let loose that toxic green sledgepede you've got there, too, because you know what? It just doesn't match the furniture anymore, you know? It's just stuff like this that has us at odds, friends. It's why we must question the puzzling evidence... The rising mound of unanswered question. That the rising mound of question? What the fuck, Florida? (laughs) Yes, and with that, we'll take our audacious and atrocious oddities and run like hell for the shadows, but not before thanking our brave and unwitting contributors to this edition of Fusebox, Nico Lane, Jody Lorimer, and Jeff Pollard. Thanks, as always, to the nimble fingers but careless mind of the Doctor of Decibels himself right over there, Milt Keynes, for technical assistance and the like and so forth and uh, so on. Pleasure as always. Thanks as well to you, dear friends, for bravely pushing play on this edition of the program. We do so appreciate that and would also greatly appreciate if you were to subscribe to this program as well if you have not uh, otherwise done so. It's very simple. Uh, And wherever you may have found it, uh, be it uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or the very OnSug itself at O-N-S-U-G dot com. That totally makes our day. As would stopping by the uh, fuse box store on your way out or hell on your way in. That works too. Simply by clicking the link in the show notes takes you to that extraordinary place where dreams are made real and speech is still free. (laughs) All manner of wondrous things await you there. The now totally indispensable face masks that, uh, that all the cool cats are sporting, you know as well as countless other things that will thrill and amaze you. The store is also reachable at the Fusebox Facebook page. Uh, Just click on the little Shop Now button or at the Fusebox Show.com site. And 
there, just click on the shopping tab and you'll get there and you'll feel so much better that you won't have to handle anybody's Python. I have been your moving the wagons in a circle just to see how dizzy we can get host, Mark Rowe saying, uh, please be careful out there. Stay safe, stay well, and until our next cartoon.